Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to look at um, some additional features of IntelliJ. In particular, we're going to explore how to use Git and GitHub within the context of your IntelliJ projects. So to get started, I'm going to just demo this by showing you how you can um, create a project from scratch that's not connected uh, or, or isn't a Git repository and is not connected to GitHub. And then we're going to go through the steps of, of setting all that up. And then we'll also look at how we can connect our projects to what we refer to as upstream repositories. And in particular, we'll see how you can connect your Java exercises project to the launch code repository in order to get updates to that project as we go. So to start, like I said, we're going to start from a, a brand new project. Go ahead and close out any projects you might have open. And in the IntelliJ main window here, let's go to create new project. And this first part, you can follow along if you like. You don't have to. The second part will be a follow along. So for now, you can just watch if you like. And I'm just going to create um, an empty project. So when you're in IntelliJ and you create a new project, you have a lot of different options of types of projects. And these are going to, um, the, the, the type of project you select here is going to dictate a lot of pieces of information and some default files that are provided for you. So, um, you know, don't, don't just ignore this and, and feel like you can fix it later. Um, this stuff is important. For now, I'm going to create just a simple plain command line Java project. So this first option is what I want. And this project SDK is also what I want, 1.8. If you have additional SDKs, um, older versions of Java installed on your computer, you might see those appear here, but we're always going to be working in Java 8. And I don't need any of these additional libraries or frameworks. All right. And I do want to create a project from template, and it is going to be a command line app. And let me just call this um, IntelliJ demo. And that directory is OK. Um, the base package, so generally, the way we um, name packages in Java, there are a lot of conventions around these things. But the base package typically is the URL of your company, or you know, if you have your own domain that you use for your personal purposes, it's that URL. And you just do it backwards with the top level domain listed first. Um, and then the actual domain name. So if you don't have a URL that you like to use here, you can use ours. You can say org.launchcode. And then finish. And we see here that we just get a basic minimal Java project with one class and one main method. Okay, so if I go to the VCS menu up here, um, I can then enable version control integration. So we have a project that's new, it's stored on disk, but it doesn't have version control set up for it yet. So what we're about to do is essentially the, the GUI version of saying git init at the command line. And recall that git init just created a local empty git repository in the current working directory. So we're basically gonna do that right now. So go to VCS, enable, enable, <laughs> enable version control integration. There we go, that's the word. And uh, I want to choose Git here. There are other version control systems. Git at this point is um, the most popular, um, although you might use some of these others in professional settings. And then I'm going to hit OK. All right, so it tells me that it created this Git repository in the particular project directory. Let's go ahead and um, open the source control view to see what's there. So if I go to this menu at the bottom left, I see that one of the options I can bring up, one of these panes is version control. All right, and so in the local changes tab, which is what pops up immediately, I see that I have six files that are listed under the unversioned. And this is because while we've created a Git repository, it was an empty Git repository. None of those files have been added. Remember that when you've used Git in the past, if you create a new file within your project, you've always had to git add that file so that Git would start tracking it, okay? so. Um, really, all of these, these GUI features we're going to be doing have command line equivalents. And in fact, if you're still more comfortable using the command line, you can still do that within your projects. You can have a terminal window open at the same directory of your IntelliJ projects, and you can be using Git at the command line, and IntelliJ will work with that just fine. So um, yeah, so we've got these six files that are unversioned. Now, what are these files? There's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't really look that familiar or useful. There's our class, right? We know we want to chart, start tracking our class in version control, but what's this other stuff? There's uh, some stuff within this idea directory, .idea, which seems to be 
probably some sort of settings stuff. We've got an XML file here, an XML file there. All of these extra files, um, with the exception of this one, are in the idea directory. And this one still looks like a settings file as well. You can look at these, you can open them up. Um, you know, there's nothing really here that we're going to be working with though. This is, this is stuff that IntelliJ uses to structure the project and to kind of provide metadata and meta information about the project you're working on. Generally that stuff is not something you want to track in version control. Okay. So how can we tell Git to ignore these files, to not look at them, to not store them in our repository? It turns out there's a simple mechanism for this, um, called, um, a Git ignore file. So let's go ahead and create a Git ignore file. I'm going to go over to the right here and I'm going to right click on my project root and I'm going to say new, and then I'm going to come down to the ignore file, um, menu here. And then within this, we see that there are lots of different ignore files for different types of applications, but down here in the middle, we see a Git ignore file. So let's go ahead and select that. This brings up uh, a modal. And basically what we're doing now is we're going to select a, a Git ignore file um, based on a template, right? So there are these templates that provide um, lists of files or directories or types of files that you might want to ignore based on the type of project you're working on. Okay. So we see a lot of programming languages, a lot of frameworks over here on the left-hand side. Um, let's just search for Java. We're just working on a plain Java project and we click on that and we see that this is the template file that we're going to get if we choose this. And in particular, there's a lot of sort of Java related files, dot class files. These are the compiled files that your dot Java files get turned into. There are jars and wars and ears and zips. These are all files that are sort of packaged up in order to deploy applications or share them with other people. And then there's some other stuff dot log, you know, if you have a log file, you probably don't want to keep that in version control. So this stuff's all, this stuff all looks good. Let's go ahead and generate. And then we are asked if we want to store our Git ignore file within Git. And we do indeed want to do that. So go ahead and click yes. All right. But notice here that down here, this didn't really change. Nothing down here really changed by adding that Git ignore file. That's because none of these files or directories that we want to ignore were listed in the template. So we're going to need to add those ourselves. So I'm going to go here to the bottom of my Git ignore file. I'm going to add the .idea directory. And once I save, notice that IntelliJ takes those files that are in the .idea directory, the .idea directory, and it removes them from the unversioned files list because it knows that we want to ignore them now. Okay. So IntelliJ is going to be smart about integrating with Git. There's still one more file here that I don't want to store in my repository. So, I'm just going to say that I want to ignore star.iml files. Star just means um, it's, it's a wildcard character. It matches anything before a dot. So this basically says any file with an extension .iml, we're going to ignore. And notice that once we do that, that last file that we don't want to look at disappears from our local changes directory. And we have only the one Java file that we actually do want to store in our repository. So that looks great. Let's go ahead and close this out. And let's go ahead and make our first commit. Okay. So, um, to make a commit, you can generally, if you want to commit all the files that have changed, you can do a select all a command a or a control a, and you can right click and commit changes. All right. And this will give you the option to kind of fine tune what you actually want to, um, commit. It turned out that, that select all didn't add these files. So I'm going to go ahead and um, select the, uh, that I want to add all of the unversion files. So you can fine tune your commits. You can only commit some of the changes, etc. And here we're going to add just a short commit message. And in this modal window, you're going to see this perform code analysis checked often. Um, I'm going to say you generally want to uncheck that. There are things that it will report to you that, um, while, uh, you know, not necessarily things you should ignore, they're not, you know, they're not rules that, um, can't be broken. So, uh, the code analysis, uh, I think for me is often a nuisance. Um, you can try it and it'll kind of give you helpful suggestions about how you can improve your code before checking it in. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to uncheck it. All right. And then I'm going to commit.
So that just committed um, those two files to my local Git repository. All right, recall we just created this repository locally on our machine. We haven't connected it in any way to an external or remote repository. So let's look at how we might um, do that now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do in order to connect it to a remote, remote repository is actually have a remote repository to connect to. So I'm gonna go to, um, let's see, I'm gonna bring up my browser window and then here's my GitHub, um, GitHub profile page and I'm going to create a new repository. I'm gonna give this the same name as my project. All right, and this one's gonna be public. Um, I'm gonna leave this unchecked and just have it um, be created from, from an empty repository. If, you know, there are other ways, you, there are other workflows you can use to, to create GitHub repositories, and in those cases, you might wanna generate a gitignore file from GitHub. In this case, we already have a gitignore file. We don't need to add a license file, so we're just gonna create this. All right, so now we have a new empty repository on GitHub. And what I wanna do is I wanna connect this remote repository on GitHub to my local repository on my machine through IntelliJ. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this URL to the clipboard and I'm gonna bounce back over to IntelliJ. All right, now under VCS, under that menu, um, go to Git and Remotes. We're going to add a remote. Okay, and see, I don't have any remotes currently, so I'm gonna go ahead and add one. And uh, if you don't have any remotes set up currently, it's gonna, by default, name the first one Origin. You can always change that, but Origin, in this case, is what we want. So then I'm just gonna paste in the URL of that remote, hit OK, and hit OK. Okay. So now I've connected my local repository to the remote repository, but I haven't pushed or pulled any files between them. Okay, so I can go to VCS, Git, and push, and this will show me a list of commits that have not been pushed to the remote, and I can go ahead and push those. So it's saying here that, um, that what I'm looking at now is pushing this initial commit, here are the changes that are part of that commit, from the master on my local machine to the master branch on the remote repository. All right, we see that that was successful. Let's bounce back over here to GitHub. And if we refresh, we see that all the files that we've created in our local repository are then on the remote. So you can use that workflow as you go to um, make changes. Let me go ahead and just show you one more thing. Now that we've set up our, um, set up our remote repository, let me just make a little change here to give me something to commit. Okay. Down here in my version control window, I see that I have one file. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus for a new change list. And let me say that this is, well actually that's not really what I wanna do. Let me go ahead and right click and commit changes. Okay, so we saw this modal before and here I'm just gonna say add hello world message as my commit message, your commit messages should always be brief but descriptive about what changes are part of that commit. And the only thing I wanted to show you now is when we go to commit, we can choose to just commit or we can commit and push to the origin at the same time. Okay, so uh, if you do that, that'll just go ahead and bounce you to the same push window that you saw before. And if we had more than one origin, or sorry, more than one remote, we'd be able to configure where we were pushing here. Uh, but I can go ahead and just push since I only have one. Okay, so that's how you can set up a local Git repository, connect it to a remote one, and kind of integrate Git into your workflow within IntelliJ. And as a reminder, it's always a best practice to commit your code frequently um, to, to provide good commit messages and to always use version control when working on projects. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close out this demo project for now. We're done with it. Um, but we're gonna move to the follow along portion of this lesson. So I'm gonna ask you to follow along by opening up your Java exercises project. Okay. 
Now, the way this was set up, you already have this project connected to version control and connected to GitHub through your GitHub repository. So, um, you know, I can show you on mine. If I go to my GitHub profile and look at my repositories, I'm going to see that I do have Java exercises and that was forked from launch code education. So what we want to do now is I want to show you how you can connect your fork to the launch code education repository so that you can get changes that we make in that master repository, in that main repository. Okay, so to do that, let's go ahead and go to that main repository. I'm going to go to launch code education slash Java exercises. You can either do that manually by typing in the URL or as I just did from your fork, this link is active as well. And then once I'm here, I'm going to go to clone or download and copy the clone URL. Okay. Now back in IntelliJ, we need to set up a new remote so that IntelliJ knows where that remote repository is. So to do that, we're going to do this in the same way that we set up a remote in our demo project. We'll go to VCS, get remotes. And here we see that there's the remote that we, we, um, cloned from when initially setting up this project. I want to add another one though, and I'm going to call this upstream and I'm going to paste in that clone URL from my clipboard. Okay. Now we have a new remote. Great. So now, um, the, the kind of most efficient way to, uh, one of the most efficient ways to work with that is to, um, use this little context menu down here, which has information about which branch we are currently working with. And it also has information about remote branches now, but notice that we don't have our upstream master branch listed in this little window. That's because we haven't fetched anything. We've set up the remote, but we haven't asked Git to go fetch any of the information about that remote repository. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to VCS, Git, fetch. Okay, so I'll click away and I come back to this context menu and I have now an upstream master. All right, so again, the upstream repository is the launch code education version of this. And you forked the launch code education version when you set up this project. However, if we make changes to, to it after you forked it, you're not going to get those changes. So what we're doing right now is we're looking at a way to actually pull those changes that happen after you forked and set up your project into your into your local project and into your fork to uh, update it so to do that um, i'm just one or two steps away let's go to upstream merge go ahead and click on that and i can say or sorry upstream master and click on that and then go to merge and then we see in the confirmation there that the upstream master branch was merged into our local master branch uh, and so any changes that came in as a part of that were brought down into our master. Let's go ahead and look and see how we can see which changes were made when we merged in there. So I'm going to go down to this little corner icon. You can click on this to make these pane uh, control bars uh, available. I'm going to open up the version control pane. And we've so far only looked at the local changes pane. But if you go over to the log pane, you'll be able to see a log of all commits made to your local repository. And we see that in particular, the last commit that was made was uh, was was a merge from upstream to master. And if you click on that commit, you can look over in the right hand pane, you can even enlarge this a little bit and give us our, give ourselves some some more room. And you can see um, the commit information, the commit message, when it was logged. You can also see those particular files that were part of that commit. And when you're merging upstream changes, you're going to get all of the commits that have been made. So there are a lot of commits that are potentially made since we last. Uh, forked this project. And so it's not just the most recent commit that brought in changes, but potentially lots of commits that brought in changes to your project. So um, get familiar with Git using IntelliJ and it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, just the one note too is, um, you know, we recommend that that you, you uh, fetch upstream changes on a somewhat regular basis. We'll let you know if any large scale changes or any important new code has been added to that repository. But every time you do that, you want to go to VCS get and fetch in order to pull in that information. And so there's a two step process to um, merging upstream changes. You must fetch first 
and then go ahead and do the merge as we did in this example.